Hey, it's Grizzly Adam, and today we're making fruitcake inside the wood stove. Only on fire with Hoarders TV. Oh, looks like we got a couple different types of maraschino cherries here. And that's a whole bunch of uh, dried fruits that have been soaking overnight. There's also some nuts on the bottom of that. First thing we need to do is get these strained out. Yeah, we're going to save all that cherry juice. Going to make a drink with it later. There we go. We need a place to put these. Um, yeah, over here. There we go. Just drop those on into this container. Alright, now we'll do the green ones. And they pretty much taste the same. It just gives a little different color. Hey! One of these days. Alright, now we're going to get all the rum off of this fruit. This is the rum that we'll actually use to baste our cake. Every month or so you can add a couple spoonfuls of the rum and it'll keep it nice and moist and make it so it well it'll keep almost indefinitely it'll, it'll pretty much preserve it kind of like Keith Richards alright moving on we're gonna cream the butter together with the sugar start putting our batter together the point of doing this is to make the cake really fluffy and by the time it gets done it'll have almost a you know, cream margarine type uh, texture. So we'll get that nice and combined before we add anything else in there. Let's start dropping in our eggs one at a time. Let those get good incorporated as well. I'm doing actually a really big batch here. I'm doing uh, four times the normal recipe, so it, yours won't look like this unless you're also making a really big recipe. But I'm filling two uh, commercial sized loaf pans, and each commercial size holds uh, twice as much as a regular household loaf pan. Drop in another egg. Now get a little bit of that scrape down off the sides. It'll make it mix in just a little bit better. Yeah, it's just butter and sugar that's stuck to the side now. Yeah, almost got it. That should do. A little more, I guess. Alright, that'll do it. Now we'll add in the molasses. This stuff, it's difficult to work with, but I went ahead and microwaved it for about 30 seconds right in the bottle. And it made it so it poured right out. And it's still a little warm here, so it's coming out of this container pretty well. Get the last of that out. There we go. Add our cinnamon. Add some baking soda and some salt. And we'll start mixing in our flour and our milk. We'll just kind of alternate those. Don't want to overload the mixer. And this is what the batter looks like when it's all put together. We're about to add the fruit, and if we did this with the mixer, we'd probably end up pulverizing some of the uh, more crumbly fruits that have been already been soaking, like the dates, they're not going to stand up to our mixer, so we're just going to put them in by hand and get them all mixed in. That's a lot of fruit. Well, I guess it's a fruit cake. Yeah, we'll just get those mixed in by hand. Okay, so in the old world, they would uh, use brown paper and brush it with oil to make uh, parchment paper. 
I did kind of the same thing. These are cut out of a grocery bag. And if you set the pan on top of the grocery bag, it'll make it a lot easier to cut at the corners and find out what your actual size is. The other one was brushed with oil. You'll see what this one looks like without any oil on it. Just make sure it's all pushed down in there. Got a pastry brush to help spread the oil, but I'm going to use this refillable uh, oil sprayer. It's got kind of a pump lid, and just you can pressurize it and spray whatever type of regular oil you would buy, so you don't have to spend a bunch of money on those re or those uh, disposable ones. Let's get that good and cool. Yeah, there's the lid. Sorry about the uh, camera work. I'm trying to do this with one hand and I was narrating it at the time. I ended up taking all that sound out because I wasn't happy at all with how that turned out. But we'll get this all brushed in and pretty soon I'm going to hand the camera over to her. Okay, well, apparently I've already scooped everything out. I just use a disher and it makes it so you can divide it up in two really easy. And then you can just use your spatula to get it all smoothed out. Here's the wood stove, the king. Uh, this morning when I got up, I put a large chunk of limestone in there. And so it's retaining a lot of heat. And those are just embers that you're seeing in there. So we'll slide the cake in there on top of the stone. And it's a really good idea if you use some aluminum foil to cover this up and keep all that fly ash off the top of your cake. Get that closed up and, well, about 35 minutes later, Let's see what it turned out like. There we go. Go ahead and pull this on out. And would you look at that. Man, that looks good. I can't wait to dig into that in two or three months. Be real good by then. Alright, let's get you guys a recipe up here. Don't forget to baste your cake after it cools. And then at least once a month. Well, until you decide to eat it. Oh, I almost forgot. Hey, remember that cherry juice? Let's put a little bit of that in the cup. We'll add a bit of cola. There we go. A little more. A little more. Yeah. Give it a bit of a stir. And we have here a Roy Rogers. Hey, I bet that'd be good with some rum. Crap. Hey, why don't you add Firewood Hoarders TV to your Roku? And while you're at it, Cruise on over to FirewoodHoardersClub.com and join the conversation. Firewood Hoarders, for all your wood porn needs.